this is actually a topic that I guess maybe more so you have had some interest in for the for several years. It goes back to our back residency. when I was a resident, <laughs> yeah, our mm -hmm. residency days. Um, but I think it's kind of a hot topic in the main pain community at the moment. Um, I think there's increased attention and seen quite a few articles and things come out about it. Um, but what we're finding is that gabapentin in particular, it's not a scheduled medication according to the DEA, so it means that it has no potential for abuse. Um, but that's actually been changing the past several years. Um, we're finding that in patients with um, substance use disorders, par particularly opioid use disorders, are at higher risk of abusing gabapentin, and they use it to achieve euphoria, um, to prevent or treat withdrawal symptoms, um, and what we, what we see is people abuse this at sometimes within the therapeutic range of dosing, but often at super therapeutic doses, three to 20 times the normal therapeutic dose, and they take it in one large dose rather than divided throughout the day. And I think some difficulties with gabapentin abuse and pregabalin, a lot of this, they kind of are very similar, um, is that there's really no way to treat withdrawal other than re reintroducing gabapentin or pregabalin and tapering them off and then providing um, behavioral support afterwards. And what I find to be difficult is that these medications, I mean, gabapentin in particular is like one of my favorite pain medications to use that's a non-opioid. Um, like when we're, when we're lowering patients' doses and things like that, I find that gabapentin is a good um, medication to help make the dose reduction or taper a little bit more tolerable. So now that we have to kind of worry about this in the background of is the patient going to misuse or abuse it or kind of watch out for signs or symptoms of misuse with these agents, it's kind of it makes our job a little bit more difficult. Um, but again, it's kind of like she's saying, it, we're seeing it more in the patient population where there's already opioid use disorder or abuse already kind of going on. And so then when these patients run out of meds or their provider abandons them or they're out of opioids, they're turning to these medications to help manage the withdrawal symptoms and kind of keep getting that euphoria or that high that the opioid substances were providing them. So it's it's, it's a balance and there's no, you know, gabapentin and pregabalin aren't detected on a urine drug screen assay that, I'm, that I know of. Um, so then you're looking at how can we really test if these substances are in the patient's system and should that be done at baseline? I mean, it brings up all different kind of clinical nuances, I would say. And the interesting thing too with gabapentin and pregabalin is they also have some evidence in several, in the yeah. treatment of several substance use disorders. like reducing alcohol cravings, for instance, but you know now we're also seeing that those gabapentin and pregabalin are being used themselves, abused themselves.